Welcome to the first edition of Cooking with Fire with the Kerrville Fire Department. I'm Mark McDaniel, City Manager for Kerrville, and it's my pleasure to host this first show. Future shows, we hope to have uh, quite a few uh, firefighters involved to show you uh, their secret recipes about uh, what goes on behind the scenes in the firehouses with uh, some good cooking. So um, I have with me today uh, the Fire Chief, Danny Smith and he has a crew that he wants to introduce that's going to be part of uh, today's show. Chief? Thank you, uh, Mark, our city manager, and uh, I'm excellent. certainly excited about this opportunity. As you know, firefighters, we live in an environment where we eat and sleep together, and the most important thing, I think, for us is that we get the proper nutrition. So when I heard from the city manager that he wanted to do this uh, show, Cooking with Fire, uh, not only was I pretty excited about it, but I think the, the crew was also. So we're at our central fire station here in Kerrville, Texas, and we have with us uh, our A-shift lieutenant, uh, Floyd. Uh, Hello. Our driver operator, um, <laughs> Bobby Cummins. And then we have uh, firefighter uh, Jess Connor with us. So we're excited about it and looking forward to it, being a part of this, but also a great meal. Yeah, absolutely. So the purpose of the show also is to get the community acquainted with what their fire service does here in Kerrville and uh, quite a bit. It's a big operation. It's probably our largest department in the city. So uh, we want to tell you more about it. So we'll have some chatter, some talk about uh, things that are going on in the fire department, perhaps the community as well, uh, so that uh, we can share with you all. So today uh, the recipe is going to be a chili rub salmon on the grill. One of my favorite recipes that my wife and I cook about every, at least once a month. Uh, and then also a uh, a pasta, angel hair pasta uh, with vegetables um, and then also a chili lime sauce. So guys, let's get after it. I'm getting hungry just hearing you talk about it. All right. So I'm not going to do so much chopping today because I chopped my two fingers over the weekend cooking as well. So uh, these guys are going to help me out in every step of the process. So we're going to get started with preparing the rub as well as the uh, chili lime sauce for the pasta. So let's get started. I'm gonna start uh -huh. with uh, preparing the uh, sauce. Um, so we'll get a shot of that and let's get those washed. And then um, if we get the salmon rinsed and then uh, pat it off, dry and put on the, the uh, cookie sheet and get that stored in the fridge until we can get the rub on. And then let's get some pasta uh, water uh, going on the, on the stove. Tell me what a typical day is like for you guys. <coughs> well, we get on shift, start uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, first thing we do is, is get our, our truck checks going and, and make sure all our equipment is ready for the day. Everybody's responsible for checking their own air pack, stuff like that. Um, we, uh, we're required to do uh, training every day, at least an hour of training, sometimes multi-company operations. And that might be three hours or night off. So we, we look at our training and the chores we have to do today, make sure things are operational or what projects we got going on. And that usually takes up our day. And then we make sure we get a, about an hour of PT and we do that around three o'clock. Okay, all right. And what are the shifts like? They work a 24, 48, uh, 24 on, 48 off. So okay. basically one day on, two days off. Okay, mm -hmm. I know every season is a little bit different. Uh, it's just a little bit different. And um, actually, uh, there's a trend taking place in the fire department right now where a lot of some departments, I don't want to say a lot, are moving to a 48, 96, 48 hours consecutively, uh, 96 off. So two consecutive days on, four off. They're trying to twist the chief's arm pretty hard for that, but he hadn't bought into it yet, so okay. we're still talking about that. All right. Okay. So, uh, what do you guys see maybe as your biggest challenges right now? Well, um, I don't know what the firefighters would think their biggest challenge is, but certainly for me as chief, uh, the biggest challenge I always face going into a new year or throughout the year is firefighter safety. We operate, uh, we work in one of the most dangerous professions that exist in the country. My biggest concern, you know, throughout the day and at night is uh, to make sure that I send everyone home safe. Absolutely. So uh, firefighter safety is the top priority for me. Okay. Excellent. So how's it coming along over there? It's coming great. Okay. So what, what he's doing here is we're actually using uh, a tool that I've had for years is one of the longest measures for making sauce. And he's making a chili lime vinaigrette 
uh, which we're actually going to use as a sauce uh, for pasta. So we've got lime and uh, honey and olive oil and cilantro. Need some help with something coming? Need some that, help with something? Uh, crushed uh, pepper in there as well uh, so that we can uh, spice it up a little bit. Uh, and then so by the time you get the cilantro in there, you got a little green. Then we're going to add the tomatoes to the pasta, a little red, and then some corn to uh, make it a, a nice color all, all around. Mm -hmm. Look at the coffee for everybody. So yeah. that's the goal okay. here today. Okay, we all set on the, the, the salmon, so we're ready to put some, ready. some rub on that. Why don't we pop that in the refrigerator so it doesn't uh, get too warm and uh, stays fresh for us. Got the water boiling for the pasta, it'll be ready in a minute. And then uh, we also need to prep the, uh, the rub. Somebody want to do that while Bobby's doing the sauce? Okay. All right, got a recipe there. So the rub is, is got a lot of the similar ingredients. It's going to have, I think, a little oregano, salt, pepper, chili, maybe even a little paprika. Um, and you know, the, the, I think it's intuitive to think that why would you put something that's so strong and spicy on salmon because it's already pretty spicy, right? Or not spicy, but strong flavor salmon. So, um, in fact, I served, we were going to serve this to my in-laws and my father-in-law says, what are you doing to that beautiful salmon? Um, but it actually works. The strong taste of the salmon and that nice spicy chili rub uh, is just phenomenal uh, when you when actually get it off the grill. So, we'll see if that works today. So are you need guys on the uh, rescue boat, the swift water? Okay, so, so have you checked out the boat yet? Yeah, yeah we checked we, out check it out. We're pretty excited about it. I saw it out here in the parking lot. Maybe we can get a shot of that later. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about the boat. We've uh, been looking to do it for a long time, and uh, Chief Smith was able to help make that happen this year. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's needed. You know, the, the well with the river's right here. So we can get some pretty swift water moving. And in the past, we've always used a, a, a paddle boat you know, and they got things done. This will really, really help rescue situations in our county. So you, so you guys serve the whole county in that regard. You, you also get called upon from time to time to go elsewhere in the state? Yeah, they are the primary go-to uh, group for water rescues in Kerr County, but uh, they are also on STRAX um, task force. Okay, you know, STRAX, so, you uh, know It's the uh, South Texas Regional Advisory Council. And uh, it's tasked with a number of things, but one of the things it coordinates is water rescue throughout the state of Texas. So uh, both Floyd and Cummins on that group, but Mark Logue heads the team up for okay. Kerrville. All right. And uh, they've been a part of uh, water rescue, water operations all over the state of Texas. Um, several were deployed during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, the floods that took place. Uh, sure. They spent some time in Lake Jackson, Houston, Beaumont. So Lake Jackson. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, assistant city manager down yeah. there. Yeah. But uh, but I think in reference to the boat, uh, it's a key piece of equipment. You know, we look at the river on a daily basis, and it looks pretty calm. But um, uh, Chief Tony Leonard, that retired recently, he headed up the team prior to Mark Logue, and um, he's a native Kerrvillian, and he talks about actually seeing that river uh, touching the Sydney Street Baker Bridge. That's a lot of so, water. So <laughs> uh, if that happens, we will definitely need something other than the raft we've used a for the boat. past. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. they're pretty excited about the boat. Yeah, we are. That'd be good. good. So have you taken it in the water yet? We haven't taken that one. Uh, being part of STRAC, and we've been on other trainings using other using STRAC boats or task force boats. Uh, in fact, we even have a training later this month we're going to go to help us prep for this new boat and get it moving forward. So we haven't put that one in the water yet, but we've been itching. Uh, I think we tried to get it in there the first night we got it and we were wanting to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that <laughs> yeah one thing you'll see when we go out and uh, actually view it and take a look at it, it's, um, it's the identical boat that they use with the uh, Texas Task Force throughout the state of Texas and actually across the country. So. It's got a big label on it, Task Force Package. So okay. you know, we're in good shape. All right. Well, I can't wait to see it in action. How are you coming, guys? Great. Okay. Great. We're right. We got some rub almost ready there. Got a shot of that rub. Here you go. So very nice. You done? 
Sir. All right. So let's get that standard back out here out of the sure. refrigerator. Chief, I think I'll let you do the honors of putting the rev on. Okay. No problem. I'll take over there for you, Chief. All right. Let's do it over here on the stove so we can get on the camera. So what you want to do, Chief, is just what I like to do anyway is just do do a pass you know this way on all of it and then you do a pass this way on all of it so you got to make that last okay. for all four pieces there i believe i can handle that all right let me see if i can Put do you it to the test look look a little side, more is better but so if we need to make some more we can do that but let's let's see how far this goes yeah. don't need to be so careful well i don't want to dump it all at one time now <laughs> <laughs> so do you get to cook at home cheese at all you know uh i do but i'm more of a barbecue man all right as opposed to actually uh cooking all right well, we're, we're gonna get to barbecue that's the salmon did, did, you, need, did, you, need the, did you need the grill preheated and when he uh we want to get it up to 300 and stay at 300 okay. yeah thank you all right looking good billy I'll tell you what, this is art here. It don't want to come out too good. You must have a secret utensil you use for it, uh, yeah, I'm Mark. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Lots of practice. So I try to grill uh, just about every day of the weekend, and grill a little extra for the rest of the week because it's just me and the wife at home, and that's what we eat. Now we're going to be doing this on a gas grill. Do you typically do gas grill? Is it uh, wood fire that you Either use? Either one will work, of course, but you want to have a grill that can keep a good even temperature because with fish, you know, it cooks pretty quick and it's it's really baking in there as much it is, as it is on the grill. I think so, I can. Um, I even did this in another city with a, a different department, and the chief said, "I, you know, I'm just not a fisherman. I don't do fish. You know, it's not. I don't don't like fish." Well, he tried this because um, you know we were on TV. He had to do it, right? So, and he loved it. And uh, so it's a little bit different taste than you might imagine with, with just mm -hmm. uh, salmon with salt and pepper on it, which is is very good as well. Uh, salt and pepper and oil and on the grill you know that's that's good stuff we also like to do it with uh lemon pepper rub uh, i think uh Earl campbell's got a rub out that's really good for that okay well if it's as good as it's supposed to be i might have to try it you know i just recently got back from alaska so i've oh, got a little right. salmon that i can use on it so that i could use it on pounds of fish did you ship home from alaska yeah, well between four of us fishing over the course of five days we shipped back 450 pounds of fillets. Wow that's a lot of fish. <laughs> Have you made a dent in it yet? Haven't touched it yet. Oh is it mostly halibut or what is it? We uh, we have halibut, we have um, pink salmon, uh, silver salmon, king salmon, black bass you know which is um, a pretty um, it's not a popular fish in Alaska most people that go to Alaska they fish for the uh, salmon and the um, halibut but uh man it was absolutely fun catching the black bass well, good. so and i hear it's pretty good eating so i'm pretty excited about it too well maybe you can bring some of that up for another show and we'll do that all right i believe the dressing is ready okay so look at that great color um and you know that's good over the pasta too and so what we do is we don't put it in the refrigerator. I've done that before, and then it gets too goopy. Uh, and with the honey in it, it's pretty thick. So you just leave it out on the, on the counter until you're ready for it. And it's nice and loose and, and mixes up well with that pasta. Not too heavy, is it? Is that no, enough? keep going. Okay. It's all it. Um, so in a moment here, we'll pop this salmon on the grill. Um, and uh, we'll get that water boiling ready for that uh, pasta. It's a quick dish. Uh, that's another reason why I like it. Because um, you still get that, that food on the grill, but you're not waiting a long time. It's not a whole lot of prep. Um, a little bit of chopping, but we've got, we've got help with that today. So now we have the chief uh, putting on a little bit of olive oil on the, the salmon. He's just put that rub on. 
so that we can get a nice good crust when it goes on the grill. Um, we'll flip it, you know, once or twice, not, not a lot. Um, it's a good firm fish, so it's pretty, pretty uh, safe to do that. So that's How does that look? Cheese. Okay. Uh, you know, fish makes its own fat, so you don't want a lot of that. It'd get greasy. Um, but that'll make a nice crust. Uh, we'll bring that temperature up on that grill to about 300 so that uh, we can bake it as much as grill it. Okay, so we've got a little avocado being cut as well. That's going to be a nice little garnish for those dishes with the pasta. Plus, who doesn't like avocado, right? A little mm -hmm. salt, you can't beat that. Um, and then we'll slice this corn, get that ready. And, and I think we already have the tomatoes washed, so we're sure. We're, we're right on schedule here. So that we the husk. Yeah, let's get the husk off the corn and then just slice the corn right off the cob and we'll store that and make that amazing. We uh, just had the battalion chief join us. Chief Lug, want to come on up and introduce yourself? Uh, this is the guy that, that runs the operation here and um, he's also uh, the, the chief guy on the rescue boat that we were just talking about. So Chief, welcome. you have anything you want to say to the folks out there about uh, the, the station here or the work that you do with the Swift Water Boat? Uh, Mark Blow, Battalion Chief on a ship, and just want to say thank you for what's going on here today. This is a pretty interesting uh, thing you got going. Uh, we just bought the new boat, Zodiac 420, and we're really excited to, to have that. It's been a long time coming. And we're getting ready to do a lot of training with it, so it's going to be uh, fun for all of us. And it's a great asset for the citizens of Kerrville during the next flood event. So, so in your your history with the department, how many years have you been with the department? Going on 21 years. Wow, that's great. That's yeah. a good career. Yeah. Hope you're here a lot longer. <laughs> Plan on it. Plan on it. Uh, well, so during that time, have you seen some floods in the river that would uh, warrant uh, to have that boat out there? Sure. <coughs> we've had numerous floods over the years, and uh, we've had a paddle raft, which is not always the best uh, thing to use in, in some of the swift water that we have around here. Um, the Zodiac is a, is a lot more beneficial and, and safer to operate in than that swift water. But, um, you know, last year, uh, Memorial Day flooding uh, last year was the most recent. Right. Uh, but every few years, we have some really good floods. So. Yeah, absolutely. On the boat, Chief, I just highlighted a little bit, but you may want to speak to the fact that the task force package is all about okay. the compatibility of what sure. we have in comparison to what's being used across the, the state by uh, the swift water teams. We right. know primarily Texas task force will run the Okay. Yeah, the, there's, there's one dealer in the state of Texas, uh, Tribe Marine, who we purchased the boat from, and since they're the only dealer, that's, uh, they have a task force package. The state of Texas has a rescue team called Texas Task Force One, and uh, you know they're responsible for uh, any response to major catastrophes, uh, building collapses, uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, that type of thing. Um, this is a package that they put together, um, and these boats are stationed or placed throughout the state of Texas. So you get standard trailer, standard uh, boat, standard motor, and uh, so if you're on a deployment and you have multiple boats operating at a flood event, then everything's compatible. Oh, that's you have good. A, Makes sense. If you have a, a problem, a maintenance issue, right. um, you can use equipment from other boat squads that are on scene. So, so when we uh, store this boat, where is it going to be located? The old Blackwell Power Station on Harper Road. Okay. Um, primarily used for storage now that we have our water operations trailer in there that we use for swift water rescue and dive okay. recovery operations. So this Zodiac rescue boat will be placed in there as well. Okay, so I'm curious now, you talking about dive operations now. Do we have certified divers on the, we do. In the department? So we have a 17 member uh, technical rescue team that will respond to swift water rescues, rope rescues, uh, high angle uh, type rescues. That, you know, we have somebody down an embankment or over a bluff or something like that. Um, and then dive operations, typically recovery operations. We aren't really set up for dive rescue, um, but we'll do evidence recovery for area law enforcement agencies and then body recovery, that kind of thing. Okay, very good. Very 
Well, thanks a lot. You bet. Appreciate you joining us today. Sure. Okay. I highly appreciate it. Yeah. Did you want these uh, tomatoes whole or sliced? Whole. whole. Yeah. So the tomatoes, you always want to keep them whole so that they stay firm because once they get exposed to that hot water, you don't want them mushy. Um, and we'll just dump that in the pasta after the pasta is completely cooked. Uh, maybe the last few minutes of that boil, we'll just dump them in there and get a little bit of, um, you know, cook a little bit but not too much. So that's perfect. So we've got the tomato ready, we've got the corn ready, we've got the beautiful avocado there. You guys are all set and that was quick work guys. So we need to get that water uh, fully boiled and then we'll get that salmon on the grill. Well, while we're waiting for that water to boil and, and not quite ready to get that fish on, we thought this would be a great time to go ahead and give everyone a little bit of a tour about the facility here. This is our main fire station, which has been remodeled recently, but I'm gonna let the lieutenant uh, give, you, give you the tour and uh, tell you a little bit more about the facility. So, sure. Lieutenant? Yeah, I believe it was uh, remodeled in uh, 2014, 14. right? And uh, we're actually standing in what used to be our front uh, yard, uh, which y'all see most of the kitchen, but I guess, um, we can just walk and go this way. We'll show you the rest of the station. So, uh, this is our, uh, our living area uh, that we come and, and get a little uh, downtime in. Uh, usually uh, after five, after the work day's done, we can come in here uh, and, and relax for a little bit from after a long day. So, like I said, this, this part was still uh, part of our front yard before the remodel. And over here is our dormitory where all the firefighters sleep. We can kind of take a look in, in here. So this is where all the guys uh, sleep, all the, the driver, firefighters, and then uh, our EMS crew. They have their lockers back here, goes uh, back down, and, and each, each everyone has their own little cubby hole, little bed, um, little desk area, so they can uh, have, have their reading time or whatever they need to do back here, uh, time, to, time to get away. So uh, goes through here. This is all still what used to be our front yard. This isn't the most exciting place, but it's the bathroom, <laughs> which will go into our truck bay, but actually back into the living room. And so, I'll take you all over to what uh, used to be our old, or the original central station. And so, right here is actually, now we're standing in our old kitchen, uh, is what this area used to be. This area used to be our, a kitchen. That actually used to be our day room back there. This is my office, this is Lieutenant's office. Uh, you'll notice that um, there's three lockers, we all share a room, and you notice in the fridge, there's three fridge, refrigerators, and three uh, cupboards. So, uh, so everybody has their own, own dish. But yeah, it's just like the, the old, old station or area. So that used to be, this is a battalion cheese room. This used to actually be the kitchen area right here. You can zoom in on that trophy there. It's from when we beat oh, the yeah. cops. Beat the yeah, cops this, the this is important. Um, right here, uh, one of my teammates here, uh, we, um, we beat PD in a kickball. Okay. So uh, we'll probably beat them again, and if they ever want to challenge us, that's fine. I'll just carry this the rest of the time. Um, <laughs> so uh, if you come back back this way, so that's this is our uh, our office. This is where anybody does uh, their computer work, their reports. This is what they do in here. Uh, do their CE. We got a guy doing some training now. That's Ryan. So uh, this is where they we get that stuff done. Back this way. Take y'all back down the hall. This is our PT room. Like I said, every day around three, we uh, usually do PT. We're required to do an hour of it each day. So this is, uh, this is where we do that. Um, usually do uh, get all together and get our stuff done in here. And then conference room over there. So this is where we have our uh, meetings, uh, round table discussions, small, small training groups we can do that. Okay, so we've got pasta that's uh, now in, in the uh, soup, so to speak, in the, on the boil, and we're going to get that, that uh, salmon on the grill now. Looks real good. I'm not sure it did that rub, but they did a good job of it. Set. 
so because we have this fish on this um, sub grill, I'll call it, um, we've got some nice crust forming here and it's also cooking well on the underneath with some of the oil. It's not just dripping down into the grill, it's actually holding um, and getting a nice cook. You're going to want to cook longer on the skin side because, you know, it's protecting the, the fish. So it's going to take longer for that heat and that uh, that fish to, to cook when it's um, down on the skin side. So we're going to let that continue to cook for a little while. Total about, uh, usually about eight minutes, eight, eight to 12 minutes, depending upon how hot you have that fire. And uh, we'll be done in uh, just a few minutes here. So Chief, talk to us a little bit about how you're set up. I know that we it's a fire department, but you've told me before that most of your runs are ambulance, aren't they? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the Kerrville Fire Department is a little unique in comparison to um, other fire departments across the state, particularly the ones that I've worked in. Typically in a fire department, you know, most of the time you have EMS in it. And EMS is a large part of what we do, uh, but it, it typically averages around 60-70% of what a fire department does here. This department is unique in the fact that 95% of what we do is EMS, you know, and uh, we're even trying to increase that and the way we're doing it is with our smoke alarm drive. Uh, we have an initiative underway right now where, in fact, we're going to be doing a smoke alarm block walk this weekend, but our goal is to um, have a working smoke alarm in every residential structure in the city of Kerrville. And we want to do that because um, statistics show that if you have a fire in your home and you have a working smoke alarm, it improves your chances of surviving that fire by 50%. So we, uh, we have a very low number of fires in comparison to a lot of fire departments and uh, our goal is really to try to have no fires in this city. Well, because nice. when you don't have them, you know, <laughs> it improves the, the, it saves lives. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, and you guys recently were recognized for your work in that effort because uh, in terms of the volume of smoke alarms that you put in the home, it's uh, pretty remarkable. That's correct. Uh, we, as you mentioned, we just recently received the Texas Municipal League's uh, Public Safety Excellence Award. It was awarded to us for our uh, smoke alarm program, but I think the thing that uh, I would like to mention about the Smoke Alarm Program is that uh, we've also been recognized by the Red Cross as being uh, one of the, the top department in the Hill Country region for Smoke Alarm initiatives. In fact, this department uh, with uh, 77 uniform personnel uh, population in the city of about 23,000, we've actually installed some more Smoke Alarms cities like Austin and San Antonio. Per capita? So, uh, yeah. yeah. No, not per capita, period. Period. So, wow. Uh, if you can imagine that, it just speaks volume to the type of workforce we have and uh, you know, how serious they are about reducing uh, fires and fire deaths in our city. Great work on that. I, I was really proud to be there with you when you got that award. What an honor. Know, and it's uh, nothing that uh, you know. I'd like to take. Uh, say I, I do, you know, but it's the hard work of the men and women. Yeah, I think the difference is that walking the blocks, right? Because there's other cities that have done this, but this has not got any traction. We actually we get out into the community, right? And uh, whenever we respond to a location, uh, once we've mitigated that incident, the uh, thing we do next is check the smoke alarm. Not only at that uh, address, but at the location on both sides. So, okay, we take it pretty serious. All right. Well, the fish is just about ready to come off. We got a pretty good fire here. I don't want to make. I want to make sure it's not, not too. Baby, uh, little got a little bit too much pink there. I'm not. I'm not keen on raw fish. Okay. Well, I think we're ready, guys, and let's get this stuff off the grill. Okay. So since Bobby is the cook here. Uh, we're going to let Bobby dress a plate for us to see what it all looks like when it comes together. So Bobby, come on in. Get a plate and let's, let's see what we can do here. So, so second order. we're going to go ahead and put some pasta on there. Make sure you get some tomatoes and corn with that. Yeah, my mouth's 
lots of water in there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Um, and then we'll cut off some salmon here. Personal choice if somebody wants that. So, um, uh, you want to try it out for us? Take a uh, I was going to let Chief try it. No, go ahead. I'm going to let Chief this, try it. I'm this is you guys' deal. Mm. All righty. A little out of salmon. It's good. Pass the test? I think so. All right. So, when are you coming back? <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna let some of the other the firefighters show their their skills and their recipes on some of these next shows. I've tasted it, so I guess I have to have the whole plate now. You do. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's uh, everybody grab a plate. So we'll start off with a little a bit of grace here, uh, thanking the Lord for all his goodness and his mercy. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to land here in Kerrville and get to spend some time with this great city. Uh, thank you so much for our uh, fire department and, and the work that they do in the public service and helping to keep this community safe. Uh, and also parts around Kerrville, the entire county and, and when they're called upon to go elsewhere. Lord, we keep them safe uh, throughout their, their day and the days to come. And uh, we thank you for the fellowship here today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Let's see. So that concludes our first show of Cooking with Fire. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed um, spending time together. Uh, we hope you'll join us the next time uh, when we have another episode of Cooking with Fire. Great. Bobby, what do you think for dinner?